For all I know, Tyler Hero's roommates aren't boys from back home. They could be Jimmy Butler's girls. Jimmy doesn't want to fly in these girls from across the country anymore. So he's going, hey, you're all just going to stay at Tyler's house and I'll call you when I'm ready for you to come over to mine. Welcome to another episode of In The Zone, the show where we love and cheer on everything NBA players do on the court and then criticize everything they do off. If you love basketball and just talking shit, make sure to hit the subscribe button for a new video every week. Let's go. Last Saturday during the Heat vs. Kings game, Tyler Hero got a message that one of his roommates got COVID. Of course they did. Can't take four white boys out of Wisconsin, put them in Miami, Florida, a state that's open and expect those dudes to follow the same protocols that Tyler has to follow. These guys are out every day trying to hit on girls. You want to come back to Tyler Hero's house? You got to suck my dick in the driveway because you're not allowed inside. But hey, don't worry. We're going to be really comfortable in the Range Rover he bought me. He got that message during halftime like his boy contracted something. Like, man, I'm so sorry. She told me she was clean. I apologize. My dick is itchy, but that's on me. I got to figure that out. Anyway, have a good second half. See you at home. Bye. For all I know, Tyler Hero's roommates aren't boys from back home. They could be Jimmy Butler's girls. Jimmy doesn't want to fly in these girls from across the country anymore. So he's going, hey, you're all just going to stay at Tyler's house and I'll call you when I'm ready for you to come over to mine. With Magruder. I don't know. I was in the locker room. Uh, but uh, apparently he was um, taking up for Wayne Ellington. When did Rodney Magruder become the tough guy of the team? Like, but I know ain't nobody scared of no damn Rodney Magruder. Like, kidding me? I don't know what Rodney is doing over there, but I will say this. I will take Rodney Magruder in a fight over Draymond Green and Clay Thompson any day of the week. That is a black man with a Scottish last name. He's going to mess Draymond up. Clay Thompson can't do anything. His ankle's too weak. Now, please welcome to the show stand-up comic and Lakers fan, Hisham Kaladi. Hisham, welcome to the show, and thank you for joining us. Yo, West Side rapping. What's up, son? How you been? You all right? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. Thanks for asking. Now, when I saw this, Last Wednesday, Lakers vs. Hawks. Juliana Carlo stands up, a.k.a. Sideline Karen. There is nobody I thought of more than you right now and your reaction. Obviously, you saw the video. Oh, I, I was watching the game live that night. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. Uh, it, and it was incredible because, like, it. listen, you have to understand, it's the beginning of Black History Month. This is in Atlanta, Georgia, the home of uh, home, uh, place of uh, MLK, like, this is some real shit. And in the middle of the game, some, like, half-melted Barbie doll literally crosses the line. Like, both, like, like metaphorically and literally. Like, she got up out of her seat and, like, got into the court. And, like, everyone's focused on the foul that just went, that just happened. So, like, I, like I'm watching, like, the left side of the screen, and you can just see, like, the head pop up at the corner here and, like, start walking towards it. And I've never seen a ref run faster than to, like, so, like you can see the wave. And then the camera guy immediately is like, oh, we have a little bit of a commotion. And it turns. And there's just some white lady screaming at everybody. And I'm, I'm like, I'm freaking out because I'm like, this is like a straight up Karen moment. And like later when LeBron called her courts like Karen, it's perfect. And like screaming at the players. And like, I have no idea what's happened. I thought like someone got hit or like someone passed out. I didn't know that she was literally just complaining straight up to the manager. And then after the fact, you see them like getting escorted and you find out after like, apparently uh, the husband and LeBron were like, maybe like talking shit very passively during the game, allegedly. And this woman uh, drunk out of her mind, dressed up like a super villain from a Disney sh uh, a film, literally like a hand with like a thing of champagne starts yelling at LeBron. Executive of the Cavaliers that Set LeBron off in Cleveland. <laughs> this lady. Wow. 
Do you think LeBron said, shut up, bitch, and sit down? 100% no, okay? LeBron James is the corniest man I've ever like seen as a basketball player, okay? This guy is trying to be as squeaky, PG, Disney clean as possible. There's no way he said, shut up, bitch. Listen, it was Pat Beverly, 100%, okay? There's no hesitation. But LeBron James is too corny, too self-aware to say something like that. And so, like, I I'm obsessed with this because immediately I'm like, who's coming for the kink? So I read almost every possible thing I could read. And The Athletic, a very reputable uh, sports magazine, did a complete investigation. They watched all the footage. And all they hear is LeBron James calling the dude, shut up, you old steroid ass. Okay, that's the most LeBron insult I can possibly think of. It's corny. It's something like a dad would say as like an aside. You know what I mean? It, that's exactly what he said. And of course, this rich, drunk psycho is going to make claims on Instagram about how LeBron James was mean to me. But you know what she did the next day? She literally put out an apology video. Okay, she took responsibility for going all Karen. So of course he didn't. This woman who was built like a deep breath, that's my favorite thing I've ever heard on the internet, was that she looked like she took a deep breath, and that's just her physical posture. I think she looks like a half-melted Barbie candle, okay? This woman is straight-up trash, and everyone immediately jumped on uh, shitting on LeBron. Yeah, she has no idea how huge LeBron James is. At all, bro, at all! Because, like, in her little world in Atlanta, her and her husband are big. But she wasn't thinking, LeBron is the NBA. Right, buddy. Yeah, no, but people went deep into uh, going after her. And they started looking into um, her history. And it turns out she's the second dude. This, she's this dude's second trophy wife. And this guy has been literally... Like, he has pictures of, like, her at, at games shitting on LeBron. And he has, like, a previous trophy wife that he also posted pictures about how much he hates LeBron. This guy has... LeBron has been living in this guy's head rent-free for, like, almost a decade and a half. Chris has been a Fox fan forever. He's been watching games for 10 years, whatever. He has this issue with LeBron. I don't have an issue with LeBron. I don't give a fuck about LeBron. There are pictures from back when he was playing for the Heat about how, and this guy would take pictures of like because he's courtside right by right, LeBron uh, and they have pictures that he posts how much he hates LeBron. Like, of course LeBron LeBron's been dealing with this dude for two decades. Okay, this isn't like some short term thing. So this woman was just taking the fucking role, trying to go with it, and like she miscalculated. And like you said, like she went after like the king. So like, no, 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 she's she's done. She got like ten thousand extra IG followers, but it's, it's not worth it. She's getting fucking, like, rolled over, bro. And then part of her video is like, oh, it, ladies, if you don't stand up for your man, and then you look at the video, and as she's getting escorted out and told to sit down and put her mask back on, her husband just sitting there like this. Like, your man isn't standing up for you. He's like, I pay too much for these tickets. I'm staying right here. And then in the video, she she says she's 25, and I was like, what? That's a heavy 25, bro. That's a heavy 25. You're 25 with a Instagram filter, but these are TV production cameras, and they pull out all the plus 35 in your skin. 4K, baby. 4K. 4K. Can't take on the king from the sideline, no matter who you are. Like, straight up, LeBron even admitted at the end, he's like, I... He misses that fan interaction. He was a fan of the bubble because it was a really safe way to do basketball. But he's a guy who needs the people in, in, the, in the crowd. He, he loves the haters. He loves the fans. Like he, and like he, was, like he, he thrived off of that interaction with the dude. But, and he even said after the fact, he's like, you know what? I missed that. I, they shouldn't have been escorted out. Because he's like, we had our little thing. And like she wanted to add a little extra. That's fine. She can sit down. And that's what great security had her sit down. But... She was a little much, and I think in a COVID era, you know, better safe than sorry. But my favorite quote after the fact was, like, how he was talking about, like, you know, he misses the fan interaction. He's like, we had, I said my piece, he said his piece, 
it was just a little back and forth. And he's like, I was surprised because, you know, I thought it was uh, father daughter until she started yelling something about her husband. I was like, oh, damn. And I'm like, that is perfect. That's the best one for us. All right. Hey, thank you so much, Isham. Appreciate you coming on. Thanks for having me, bro. Thanks for watching. Click in the top right to watch last week's episode and click subscribe on YouTube to be notified every time we drop a new episode. Thank you guys so much again and I'll see you next week.